Oh, I hope my display is visible to everyone. So yes. in so in yes, this sure. particular in this particular session, we will revisit our API session that we took previously, but we'll discuss it in detail. So what is our API to start with? So API is just application programming interface. And why do we use an API? So what is an API? So API is just we are the end users, customers, clients, all our end users. So they request something from the server and they get the response. The response can be of any kind like JSON, XML, text. So if we are logging into Facebook or we are logging into Gmail. So when we enter our ID and password, we make a post request to the server. And then when we click on inbox, we make a get request that we want to see the mail. So Gmail shows us all the emails that we have from the database. So from a backend database, the API fetches all the data and provides us in the JSON format. And then we have front end and everything that converts this front end into the Gmail that we have. So if we are watching something on Netflix, of if we are seeing anything or if we are just loading content in power bi dashboards so everything is been communicated by the server the computer the cloud by using an api so api requests something and the response is that we always want for our daily use so the response can be finally converted into dashboards or data warehouses so if i want something uh, from the api so i will make a get request then the server responds and that response has been data engineered by the data engineers and then stored into uh, our data warehouse or a database which is finally used by data analysts to create some uh, dashboards or some transformations and this is then used by data scientists to make insights and this insights are then finally used by business analysts product managers and ceos for the growth of the organization or to enhance the product or to retain the customer base so this is all about apis so now how many types of api calls do we have So uh, I'll just show you it here. So there is one post call, there's one get call, there is one put call, patch call. So as of the right, uh, say current session, get and post are relevant for us. So get is getting anything from the server and post is submitting something to the server or transferring data into the server. So first we we'll talk about this PayPal I had already requested everyone to create an account on PayPal developer and then have a look at this documentation. So first, uh, anybody can create an account on PayPal developer. Now, if we are having a PayPal ID with us and uh, we don't want uh, like anybody random person to access our confidential information and financial transactions. So this has been protected by using authentication. So there were various authentication methods up till now, starting with bearer token or 1.0 or 2.0. So the relevant one, the current and latest one is or 2.0. So what we do is first we copy paste this curl that is available under the authentication tab. So we copy this and we paste it over here. We click on we open this postman and create a account on it and we then click on import. Then we paste the raw curl. And when we submit it, we have uh, we uh, have all the data in the necessary headers. Everything is uh, refilled. And then what we can do is you have to log in into our PayPal ID. 
so here is where we get our client id and client credentials so once we create a account on paypal developer we can log in and create a app so once we create a test app or use the dis default app and we can just click on this edit and get our client id and client password so these are very important so using this only we have to then switch to this basic auth there are various auth available here no auth basic auth we are a token auth 1.0 or 2.0 so we have to use this odd 2.0 you have to place paste this client id here and we have to paste this client secret here so once we do that everything is set up we can make a send request which is basically a post so we have our access token which has a particular expiry time so after this expiry we have to regenerate our access token so we can use this access token so after this what you have to do you have to go again to the documentation now we have to look for invoicing api so we have we need to look at the invoices that we already have We have to click on list invoice so we have this url so you have to copy this url we have to provide all the information such as which is given here how to make api request so you have to copy this entire url do it again like import so then we'll get this place and here we have to paste here this token we have to put we have to go to authorization the token that we got if we have a look over it we can see that if we make a send we can see this is of the type bearer so in authentication we have to click on bearer token you have to paste our token here and if we see it here and we could send request we get all the invoices so this is one way of making an api request now where are these invoices coming from so if we go to this paypal developer dashboard in testing tools we have sandbox accounts so sandbox means dummy so this business account we had created we have to use this id so we have the passwords we have the id and password of this sandbox account so you have to search for sandbox paypal you have to search for it you have to I have to click on login so this is a dummy account just for debugging and testing purposes so this the money it contains are is just for learning purpose so if you log into our sandbox dashboard we have 5000 usd so we can click on invoice we can create invoices using this button so the latest invoice which i had was shantaru so if you look over here here also we have this invoice so now what we want to learn is suppose if the uh, we have one lakh invoices so these are too many of invoices so if we have a look over here we can see there is something called page so page 3 page size is 4 total count is true so total count if we set it to true we can see how many invoices are there if we set the page size to 4 in one page four invoices will only be visible if we keep page to 3 then the third page will be shown it will have four invoices so Page size is by default 5000 for most of the servers, as we can see, only 5000 records on. So, if if there is very uh, like lots of data in this invoice API, so setting a page size to 5000 will 
create the server to respond very slowly and it will uh, inhibit our data engineering processes and slow the things down. So what we do and the blobs, all the storage requirements also increase because if page size is 5000 and data is huge, then it will take 20, 30 MB. So to reduce that, we can keep the page size to 50 or 500 or 100. So reducing page size is the option in that scenario. So now if we call this. Page size is 5, page number is 1. So we have 20, 30 something invoice. If we keep the page size to 3, page number to 3, we can see the third page. If we keep it to 4, we can see the fourth page. If we keep it to 5, so we have no records because we only had 20 records. So in the last page, if we go and see, we can see the items, every item, every invoice. So that you can see it in the last page in the links uh, portion, the uh, relevant uh, href and rel is set to previous because it is the last page and there is no next page there's only a previous page and if we look at the third page if we go down we can see there is self that means if you want to go to the same page you have to click on this link if you go, we want to go to next this is the url if you want to go to the previous this is the so in if you see in next the page size is incremented if you see in the previous the page size is decremented so if we go to page size page number one now if we say there is no previous because this is the first page so go for going to next page we have page number equal to two so this page page size page number all these terminologies uh, vary with different apis and there is invoicing department in that invoices is there so for all there is identity department there is catalog disputes orders payments payouts so we use various uh, apis for different use cases so why do we use postman like, so if we cannot directly go and create the application because that might crash or if we use this url in our azure function logic as data factory power bi fabric we don't know the end result so for testing and debugging purposes we use postman to have a look at our data and as you can see it's a box array and that we have data and in detail we have further element sub nesting and there is it is nesting here and in links we have nested array so we have to transform all this nested array and for that purpose we use data flows we use fabric and we use azure function so the response the content type you can see it's application json and when post if you see the content type it's encoded format so now i will show you one different uh, one different service titan api so in that there was uh the first process is to show a uh, first process is to create access token so here you can see the access token is very huge so it is copy this the expiry time is also very short so in postman you can create this variables and variables help to like we have very lots of lots of endpoints crm endpoint accounting endpoint invoice job planning dispatch so we have to, to uh, like if we want to create this is for client woods so there is texas there is rbrooks phs so for every client for all the endpoints you have to manually enter the data so instead of doing that we can just create variables and dynamically use them everywhere wherever we need so if we go to this invoice api so here you can see uh like in payments you can see the tenant id is a variable which which we are in uh, editing and invoice if you look if we send 
we can get the data from the server as a response. So we have to wait till the response comes. And it's taking this much amount of time because the page size is 5000. So the data is very huge. So that's why it's taking this much amount of time. So if we have a look over here, the size it will be shown after the execution. So it might be a very huge file, 31 MB. That's why it took this much time. If we keep page size to 500. So if we now make a send request, you can see the considerable reduction in the amount of data from the API. So it, it uh, lessens the burden on the server and helps us to achieve our targets and uh, execution and execution in very short span of time rather than burdening the server. So if we now look the size of the data from the server, it is just 3 MP. So this is one method to efficiently use the Postman. Now you might see why we are using modified or, or after here. So if we have a look at our data. So if we see our invoicing endpoint, we can see something like that is uh, in the response. There is something such as modified on. So what is it? So if we look here, there is one term element called modified on. Invoice date is there. So if we look at our response here in the postman, so there is if we go and copy this. Uh, now if we can see this, there is invoice date. There is created on and modified on. So if we uh, for if we are every day full loading this data. So there is no need to manually download uh, millions of data every day. So if we if I have the data for today, tomorrow I don't need to again load all the data for yesterday, day before yesterday. So I'll just load the data which has been uh, created the current day. And all the previous data will just stay in our database. We won't fetch that data. So this technique is called incremental loading. So for that we use this modified on. So this is used to just load the recent data and not load the previous backdated data. So we have using this modified on or after we're putting the date. So if we I if I just remove this. And if I just make it 1900 0, 1, 0, 1, and page size, let's keep it to 50. 10 as we are testing. Now, if I send it, I'll see entire data from 1900 has been loaded. See, 2010 data is also. So now, if I just want data for this year, I'll just keep it to 2024 and then I'll send. I see the data. If we go to modified on, it's 2024. So, this is the method to do incremental loading. So, this is used in our databases where the data is very huge so we prefer incremental load rather than full load and this also if any changes as you can see the created on is different and the modified on is different so data might be created previously but there has been modification every day suppose this entire api is for technicians so suppose well, some product is in warranty and some work has been done it in the service period. So they always the invoice keeps on updating the data keeps on updating the technician name or some other details might be updating. So we always fetch this modified on. So if any changes happen, we are upsorting it. So here you can see rather than total required here we have different filter called include total. It varies according to the APIs. Now this was all about get tokens. Now there is something called post call. 
So there is one API which requires us to provide some data. So we have the post call. So we have to provide something to it in the body. So if we see we are providing the date. Parameters from date from this date to this date. So there is a seven day period. So we this is the method to get reporting data of reports for inactive uh, invoices. If we send it, it provides a seven day period of technician assignments data. So this is the method how we can provide how can you can provide a post call so this uh, json schema has been uh, mentioned in the documentation if you have a look so you have to do it whatever the documentation says and we have to provide the schema for body of the post call and we have to send it so we can use it to get access token as well as for submitting any other information suppose if we are logging into facebook or logging into gmail or logging into credly so there is post call happening in the back end so it produces some data if you are web clocking into currently we are using the post api call so it provides our time duration authorization and submits it and if we are getting gmail inbox data or instagram photos or anything we are using get call so this is basically some fundamentals of postman that i wanted everyone to know So this is all about the APIs or uh, tasks that we generally use for data engineering as well as data analytics. So if somebody has any questions, they can right away ask me now or they can uh, come back to me anytime.